Today, we'll be talking about brain chip. BRN had an absolutely stellar start to 2022. I'm sure many of you remember that almost parabolic run upwards, where the ASX BRN share price was above the $2 mark. But since then, the BRN share price has fallen by over 50%. And many people are wondering, what is happening to Brainchip? And most importantly, where do things head from here? I've read a lot of different discussions about the fact that, oh, Brainchip share price has come off so significantly. Is there cause for concern? What does it actually mean for the broader BRN story and the Akita opportunity? Well, today I thought we'd have a bit more of a nuanced view and actually explore some of the contributing factors to the broader sell-off. I know that a lot of people have had quite a limited view and have just said, Brainchip share price has come off. Things must be going wrong or the share price went up previously. Things must have been going well back then. But I think it is worth having a bit more of a nuanced view, looking at the range of different factors that ultimately come together and provide that aggregate overview of the share price. And so we've isolated it down to four key factors. Of course, these are not the only ones, but today we'll explore the fact that there's been a market-wide sell-off. Obviously, the geopolitical tensions and uncertainty, the news flow surrounding BRN in the past period, and of course, the actual share price itself. Make sure you stay until the end because we'll use a commonly referred to uh, psychology mindset framework discussing the locuses of control. We'll be able to pull that together and explore what this actually means for how people are assessing a company like ASX BRN. And so then I guess to start off that discussion, before we unpack each of these contributing factors and talk about the BRN share price itself, it makes sense for us to remind ourselves, what is a share price? Ultimately, it's just an aggregate overview of a market's current willingness to pay. And this goes for any different asset type, not only stock prices themselves, but it's just an insight into the market's current willingness to pay at that time. But then we have to peel the layer one step further back and remind ourselves that when we're looking at asset types, we're not buying a share price, we're buying an underlying asset. But unless you're speculating on these asset types, if you're looking to invest into them, then over the long period of time, you're looking to buy the underlying asset. Of course, the price is important, but you're looking to buy the underlying asset and not the share price itself. And so as we go through this discussion, I think it is important for us to delineate between the share price and an asset. And of course, this doesn't go for only Brainchip. We're discussing Brainchip today as a bit of a proxy for discussion surrounding different ways that we can analyze and view companies. And as you guys know, I'm obviously not a financial advisor. Nothing we discuss on the channel is financial advice. Stocks we discuss, they're not buy recommendations, but hopefully it's an interesting starting spot for you to go away and do your own research and have a look at a range of different companies on your own. And so then just casting our minds back to thinking about the Brainship share price itself. For those longer term investors into the Brainship story, many of you will remember that over the past period, it's been trading between that 30 to 40 cent mark up to that 60 to 70 cent mark. Of course, over the past year, it was trading that 40, 50, 60 cent range for a significant period of time. There was that parabolic move upwards, which we obviously can see on the chart. And now the share price is starting to move its way back to where the market is deeming is a reasonable fair value. It is worth noting that, as they say on the markets, when in doubt, zoom out, everything in context. Yes, the brain chip share price is down by over 50% from that parabolic move upwards, but year to date, it's still up by 30%. And over the past year, it's still up by over 50%. And of course, I think for those longer term investors who had been following the Brainchip story, most of those longer term investors will reflect on the fact that that movement was an anomaly. A lot of speculators and short term traders got into the company. There was a lot of excitement. There's a lot of FOMO pushing it higher and higher. But of course, that doesn't invalidate the long term opportunity. That was just the short term price movements. And overall, it looks like the Brainchip share price is starting to move its way back to what the market is deeming is a reasonable level. It's going to be interesting to see where the dust settles. And so then now, it makes sense for us to think about some of the different reasons why the brain chip share price has fallen off. I think first and foremost, the easiest one to really understand and most people can conceptualize is the fact that there has been a market-wide sell-off. When you're looking at a company itself, probably the first thing that you want to try to isolate and understand when a company's share price has fallen off is, have the company's fundamentals changed? Has something significantly affected the company in terms of their potential earnings output, in terms of their channels that they're able to distribute into? Has there been something internal that's affected them? Or is it just sentiment and the general market trends? As we know, a rising tide lifts all ships, but of course, a tide that's coming down means it's gonna be very heavy and difficult to swim against the tide. We've seen global indices heading into correction territory, the NASDAQ, which is often used as a proxy for technology or the growth year end of the market, at one stage entered a bear market. Brainchip has not been immune to that, and particularly the fact that early stage technology, particularly those without current cash flows, have been the hardest hit. And so Brainchip falls into that category. So we have seen a share price fall off on the back of it, but I think it is worth noting that this has happened as part of a market-wide sell-off, and it hasn't only been isolated to Brainchip or the semiconductor sector or just one cohort of the market. 
And then, of course, we have the geopolitical tensions, which have exacerbated the uncertainty in the markets, the fear surrounding the market, and of course, which has amplified the sell-off that we've seen. It's affected the macroeconomic picture. I'm sure everybody's familiar with the Ukrainian situation, and it is a difficult situation, and we continue to hope to really just wish that there will be a safe and swift resolution as quickly as possible. And that's the major and most important factor when considering any of this. But we do know that it has affected global supply chains as well, and economic sanctions will continue to flow through. With this uncertain underlying uh, uncertainty really playing itself out on global markets, it's been difficult for a range of different companies. And once again, Brainship hasn't been immune. And so the geopolitical tensions have really amplified all of that uncertainty with a market-wide sell-off. And then it's worth noting as well that ASX BRN haven't put out any official ASX announcements surrounding commercial agreements or anything of that nature over the past period. But it is worth understanding once again that this does not mean that company progression has halted. For example, there was a company piece of news that came out that stated that Information Systems Laboratory will be developing an AI-based radar research solution. They'll be leveraging a key to technology used for Air Force Research Laboratories, which is, of course, it's a pretty significant connection with the US defense, and it's quite an exciting one. We know there's a lot of different opportunities that Brainchip continue to pursue as well. I know that many shorter-term investors who have only just got familiar with the Brainchip story they might have come on board or been familiar with it when Mercedes uh, revealed their Vision EQXX and announced that Brainship Cicada would be within that. But I do think it's very, very important. And those longer term investors who have been following the BRN story for a while know that the Mercedes EQXX news, granted it was exciting, it validated the technology, it was confirmation that big global players were interested in and willing to uh, not only utilize the Akita technology, but put their name and connect that with brain chips. But it's not the only news. And in fact, I think that a lot of the longer term investors might have been just as, if not more excited about the IP licensing agreements, firstly with Renassis and then mega chips at the back end of last year. And since that mega chips deal, the brain chip share price is up by over 50%. Of course, a lot of the shorter term investors who might have only just got familiar with the brain chip story, uh, they got very excited about Mercedes and Vision EQXX. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the brain chip model has not deviated. It stayed very uh, consistent. The focus is ultimately develop the technology, develop Akita. AKD 1000 is ready now. It's to start inking those commercial agreements. They've got Renassus, they've got mega chips. Of course, it's a commercially sensitive space. There's still a lot of discussions going behind closed doors and continuing to flow through. But over time, as those IP licensing agreements start to come through and then ultimately you start to see products with Akita embedded, it is it has the ability to be a very profitable uh, business model over time, very high margin. And of course, the snowball can start to pick up pace and start to pick up pace fairly rapidly. So yes, the market's awaiting further commercial deals or R&D development. But for those longer term investors who are familiar with the brain chip story, it's basically business as usual and things are progressing as we're anticipated. Of course, there is the potential that we could start to see a cater in products with either an asset or mega chips over the next 12 to 18 months, as well as the opportunity for further commercial agreements as well. And as we know, the first one, two, three, four, five are the hardest to ink. Once you get a few agreements, you get some big names like Mercedes, as they start to announce these things, and of course, other companies in the space will sit up. They'll start to pay attention and they'll start to see if they have any utility or potential use cases for Akita to be embedded into their products moving forward. And then another area that I think most investors are able to acknowledge is that it seems like the fundamentals with the recent run up are disconnected from the price that the markets were willing to pay for this. Of course, every investor, analyst, economist is going to have a different value and fair value that they attribute to uh, not only Brainchip, but the IP that they have and the fact that they've got the world's first and only currently commercially available neuromorphic processor. But we know that there are different values attributed to more earlier stage technology companies on the ASX than say the US NASDAQ. And so as a result of that, of course, it takes time to not only make the market in terms of the customers that may be willing to purchase it, but to make the market and to educate the investors about the opportunity that a company like Brainship, who is still for all intents and purposes, essentially pre-significant revenue um, and just in the early stages of really beginning this commercialization phase has. So yes, there was a significant exuberance in the run up. There were many gaps to fill on the way down and we've started to see that happening on the chart. It's worth noting that everything in context, zoom out a little bit, just three months ago, back end of 2021, we closed under the 70 cent mark. And so being at that $1 mark, we're still up 30% year to date. We're still up over 50% over the past year. And considering the market's been in a correction, hey, that's a pretty good result. And I think for most investors, if you went back to the back end of December last year and said brain chip would be a dollar at this stage, it's probably accelerated ahead of where most longer term investors who have been following BRN for a while would say. 
Now, of course, a lot of short-term speculators and traders entered the market. It can take time to cycle through that on the charts. And of course, it does mean that there could be overhead of resistance as Brainship continues to move upwards. But I think all of this, whether the share price disconnects from the fundamentals in the short term that the market's willing to pay, does not invalidate the long-term opportunity. This all stays intact. Brainchip have the world's first and currently only commercially available neuromorphic processor. They have a top class team with a strategy focusing on the IP licensing route, which is quite fascinating and has the roadmap to really continue to scale for years to come. And of course, they're now in the position with some initial agreements and the promise of more to flow through over this upcoming period that it is quite an exciting one. And so it's going to be fascinating to see where this bus heads from here. And so then that brings us to the discussion of the locuses of control. I think first and foremost, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. If you're new here, welcome. We make a daily video each and every day, so make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on. We'd love to have you join the community and you won't miss any of those daily episodes. Also, let us know your thoughts. Drop in a comment below what you think about Brainship, the story, and where do you think things head from here. So this discussion surrounding locuses of control. It's quite an interesting one. Now this framework itself is a psychological or a mindset framework. You might be familiar with it. It essentially states that there's two forms of locuses of control. And of course, everybody sits in one part of the spectrum with these two being either ends of the extreme. And internal locus of control essentially states that an individual takes responsibility for uh, and believes that they are responsible for what happens to them in life. While well, an external locus of control states that uh, an individual attributes a lot of the uh, responsibility and the outputs in their life as a result of the uh, effect of the world around them. And so it might be the difference between saying, today is raining. One person might say, I am having a good day. Today is raining, but that won't affect it. While others will say, oh, it is raining today. I'm going to have a bad day as a result of it. It could be the difference between someone getting uh, someone missing a promotion at work and stating, oh, I missed a promotion at work because I didn't do X, Y, and Z, and I didn't put in enough effort. Well, others might miss a promotion at work and say, oh, I missed this promotion, and that's because I'd, other people are playing politics and the bosses didn't like me, and this is the cause of that. And you might be wondering, how does all of this relate to the share price of a company? Well, I think that many investors often think about uh, the locus of control or the locus of analysis that they have. So if we adapt this and we change locus of control to locus of research, I think a lot of investors uh, use external, uh, I guess, inputs as their only form of analysis. So they might see the share price and say, the share price is up 30% in early January. The company must be going well, time to get more. Or the share price is down by 50% over the past month. Something must be going wrong with uh, the underlying company. And this is only speaking about brain chip. This is speaking about how people perceive the markets and everything surrounding it. But I think what's much more useful uh, and probably has a better long-term success strategy that you're able to continue to replicate is having an internal locus of research. So you do your own research, you attribute your own fair values, you develop your own understanding uh, about the companies that you're looking into, the opportunities, the potential scale and earnings. Uh, and then you can use external uh, inputs as I guess uh, final indicators or confirmation. So you could say, this is my understanding of it. This is what the market now attributes to that. Uh, why is there a disconnect? And you can do further research. But I think if we're we're only just looking at uh, a share price as the only indicator uh, of a company's success or progression, we're limiting our understanding quite significantly. And that's something that I've heard uh, playing itself out over this past period when Brainship share price has gone down. I think uh, the share price is not the company's progression. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, company progression cannot drive share price moves and the other way around as well. But I think it's much more important to think about where are we getting our understanding about the business, the success, the opportunity and the scale. Now, that isn't to say that Brainship couldn't go down further or it could go up higher. Nobody knows where things are going ahead and the market is truly just a balance of probabilities. But what's important is that you're weighting your own probabilities based on your assumptions and not only using external inputs as the only factor to consider it. So where does Brainship head from here? It's going to be a fascinating one. We'll continue to watch. They've got a long roadmap ahead. Of course, R&D on the AKD 2000 and 3000 front will be exciting. And commercial agreements do have the ability to move the prices as well as excitement surrounding it too. As you guys know, this is, of course, just a general discussion. Hopefully you enjoyed it. However, let us know your thoughts on it all. We'll leave some videos up above discussing some other discussions in the space too. Thank you so much for joining us. Going to be very excited to see where this bus heads from here. Akita Ballista. And for now, stay well and happy investing.